Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, welcome along to a new video. And today I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk to you about my experience with the Drone Hacks application on my DJI Mini 2. So the reason that I went along with this is that the DJI Mini 2 comes with DJI's uh, geofencing restrictions or no fly zone restrictions um, by default. Now people have their own opinions around about that, whether it's a good or a bad thing. Um, my experience is that I think there should be a little bit more flexibility within this. Autel drones and Parrot drones don't offer this um, restriction uh, and I'm sure there are some good reasons in there for that. There are some people who are a little bit careless with their drones but my opinion is that people should have a little bit more flexibility with the product that they buy. As an example, where I live is within what's regarded as a blue zone, so I can't fly my drone without first checking a box to say that I have permission to fly within this zone, and that isn't always the case. I might want to check the the gutters of my house or the roof, or you know, just show someone the drone one meter off the ground in my garden, and I can't do that without first um, seeking those permissions. So, the Drone Hacks website, so it's drone-hacks.com. They offer an application um, which you buy a license for. And the license for the specific drone, the DJI Mini 2, was uh, 40 euros, which is about 35 pounds. Um, and that allows me to do two things with the drone. Um, it allows me to remove the, the geofencing restrictions. And it also allows you to boost the signal of the drone um, to FCC levels. It doesn't jump the drone to the FCC frequency. It just allows you to boost the, the drone to those levels. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works in a moment. Drone hacks do offer licenses and modifications for other drones as well. And in this video, we'll take a look at the application that they offer that allows you to do that. But first, I'll talk to you about how this modification works. Um, in essence, what the drone hacks application does is applies an unlock certificate to your drone. Um, this is one that you can, you know, an unlock certificate is what you can get from the authorities. Um, apply to your drone for a limited period of time allows you to fly within a, a certain area and this, the same method is taken by this modification it gives you an unlock certificate which in essence the range is the whole world and it doesn't expire for like 100 or 1000 years I can't remember the, the exact date um, but it, it allows you in essence to, to fly anywhere what happens is when you're flying within a, perm a permitted area it will fly exactly as normal when you cross the boundary into what would have previously been a blue zone or a red zone, the, the drone itself will say, or sorry, the, the application will say, unlocking zone reached. It pronounces the word a little bit different to that, something like unlocking zone reached or something to that effect. But in essence, it does let you know that you are flying into one of those zones. Um, and I'm not suggesting that people do be careless with their drones, but um, you know, I like a little bit more flexibility um, within that. The signal level doesn't happen by default. Um, the signal level, when you power on the drone, you have to press the button at the back of it till the drone beeps. It beeps another couple of times, then you press the button again, and it changes the, the signal levels of the drone so that the, the, the range is a little bit further. Um, and I haven't really tested that. I can see within the app that the, the signal levels have changed. But in terms of the range, you know, I, I do keep the drone within line of sight, so I haven't really tested that um, myself. What we'll do is we'll show you what the application looks like um, itself. Um, so if I just bring this up onto the screen just now, what you're looking at is the, the application that you get from Drone Hacks, and you can see that I have logged in to activate the license. The Mini 2 is connected at the moment. I've blurred out some of the serial number, but you can see it's recognised it's a DJI Mini 2 with a serial number that starts with a 3. And it gives you information on the uh, the firmware and stuff as well. Uh, and the license has been applied here. Now you can see the recommended firmware um, for my drone is the one that's applied, which is one, three, and then four zeros. Um, because my serial number starts with a three, but for drones that start with a five, they would recommend you go with the uh, slightly later firmware. Within the hacking tab, you can see this is where you apply the hacks. Um, so you can change. It says FCC mode, it doesn't change to FCC mode, uh, which I think is 5.8 gigahertz. Um, it just boosts the signals to those. So you can see we've got the, the ability to, to modify the signal there. Um, in there you have the option to remove uh, a limit. Um, I believe that's on the height. 
And then this is the one I was interested in here, which was removing... Well, you, you have an altitude limit removal as well. I'm less interested in that, more just the no-fly zone. So you press hack and it makes those changes. And I've made those changes to my other one already. You do have an option to flash back to the original DJI firmware if you had to undo the, the work that you've done so far. And then with the hack parameters, this is where you can get a little bit more detail. So you can start to change things like the, the tilts and this, the climb rates and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't touched this at all. I guess if you're a little bit more advanced and want to be a little bit more flexible, you have some options here um, with that as well. So really, that, that's all I had to say on the matter. Um, you know, we've seen the application. Um, the modification has been made to the drone. It's worked fine for me. I've noticed no other changes in the performance of the drone. Some people do recommend that you use the drone in airplane mode once these changes have been put in place to stop DJI undoing the changes. Um, I didn't do that and I've not experienced any issues. And the other thing I guess to call out is that yes, if you update the drone firmware itself as prompted by the application, it's possible that it might remove um, the restrictions that are in place there. If you wanted to, you can disable the, the geofencing uh, unlock, if you will. So as you go into the DJI app itself, I might include a screenshot here just to show you what that looks like. You can see the unlock certificate that has been applied and you can disable that if you wanted to do so, if you were lending the drone maybe to someone else or for whatever other reason. I hope that's been helpful for you. I just wanted to share that I've had a really positive experience of this and that you should as well uh, consider it if you're looking to unlock those restrictions. If you have any questions on the matter, please comment below and I'll share my thoughts. Thanks for watching.